the uh, the next event uh, coming up here is in uh, about a minute when the center engine cut off of the uh, S2. Mm -hmm. Six minutes, 55 seconds, 95 nautical miles in altitude. That's, what, that's the one that cut off early on uh, Apollo 13. 13, uh, right. But uh, they had enough boost in the remaining four uh, engines of the uh, S2 to get through. The Very good. Velocity, that was another one of the changes to have an accumulator in the lines to prevent this so-called oscillation or pogo effect, yeah. which caused a premature shutdown. I can't say we have those fellows as rookies anymore. They're committed. <laughs> 7 minutes, uh, 30 seconds, uh, 14 uh, flying almost uh, parallel over the ocean now with Shepard, uh, with the Shepard crew in a heads down position. Really moving out now for downrange distance. Uh, we show downrange of 587 nautical miles. Inward cut off. Roger, inboard. That was Shepard. That was a center engine shutdown right on time. Good oh. thrust on the other four. Al's flown farther now than he did before. <laughs> yeah, he's flown farther. He's still got uh, seven more minutes before he equals his 15-minute flight before. He's, uh, he's within seven minutes of doubling his time in space. On well, the flight of Apollo 14, has Eight gotten minutes, up after a 40-minute hold. 98 nautical miles in altitude, uh, 700 uh, nautical miles downrange. I must say, looking up at those clouds, I didn't know we were going to make it today. 81 feet per second. Staging status, your go for state. The MC is go. I just the MC go. That's the uh, outboard engine cutoff. Uh is supposed to come now at uh, 9 minutes and 17 seconds into the flight. That's about another 35, yeah, 40 seconds. Right, your level's in time. And then we get the first test of that S-4B, which is so vital to the flight out to the moon. Uh, that's the last of the third stages. It's a 20,500-pound thrust engine, and uh, it's got to light for the first time. Mark, 9 when minutes, these, uh, so 100 nautical miles in altitude, 830 nautical miles downrange. That's vital for coming back, too, remember. That's right. <laughs> then it shuts down, fires again. Yeah, uh, the S-4B four I'm four talking four about. Yes, yes. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's SPS we're talking about. Roger, mode point. 4. That uh, mode 4 call uh, says a good uh, service. Roger, cut off. And staging. Roger. And good thrust done, 1. Good. Roger. Great. So the S-4B ignition minutes, uh, 30 seconds. Place. Thrust looks good on the S-4B after staging. Looks good on the S-4B. Thank you. The uh, Shepard crew has now used up two-thirds of their Saturn stages on their way to orbit. We're at 9 minutes, uh, 45 seconds, 101 nautical miles in altitude, 989 nautical miles downrange. Velocity now reading at 23,300. 23,313 feet per second. Well, this S-4B fires until 11 minutes and 43 seconds into the flight. That's another minute and a half, approximately. Houston, everything's looking perfect here. Roger. By that time, they're achieving an orbital speed of almost 18,000 miles an hour. 10 minutes, 25 seconds, 102 nautical miles an hour. Altitude, uh, 11,443 nautical miles downrange. Velocity uh, now reading uh, 24,206 feet per second. They should uh, hit the orbit, to the window, a little keyhole in the sky into orbit. Proper orbit. And Houston, yep. predicted cutoff is uh, as planned. One one plus four three. That's Rusa, I guess. Predicted uh, time of shutdown eleven minutes uh, forty three seconds. I think that number came up from the uh, trajectory team. That was oh, that down 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 ten seconds. Mm -hmm. And Houston, predicted cutoff one one plus four three nominal. Over. Right, one, 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 three. Oh, that was there. Downrange distance now 1,322 nautical miles. 11 minutes, uh, 30 seconds. So we got about another 10 seconds now, and we'll get that last cutoff and the parking orbit uh, insertion. Standing by now for shutdown. You got a good cutoff. Roger. Uh, sounds 
about right, a little yeah. second early. Possibly. Shut down. Uh, we'll stand by uh, now for preliminary orbital readings, uh, both on board and uh, from the ground. It's kind of fun to say parking orbit when you're zinging around at 18,000 miles an hour, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, they're at that point suspended between the Earth's gravity and the, and the momentum that uh, they have picked up uh, into space so that they it's a parking arm. They're hanging out. Really, you know, they're, 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 sure. they're, well, they're, they're really falling around the Earth, which is rather interesting, at the rate of the Earth's curvature. Good show. Go orbit. Booster safe. Super cool. <laughs> Roger. Good show. Go orbit. Zero power two coming off now. Fourteen Houston. I have a Z torquing angle. When you're ready to copy. Okay, we're showing about 99 by 102.9er. That's my first thing. Uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, we're advised that the Vice President of the United States is now in the firing room. Uh, we will switch uh, to Cape Kennedy. Who's coming? Here is uh, Vice President Agnew, his official party. I don't, uh, I can't uh, identify them on my monitor here, unfortunately. Got a lot of light and the monitor is rather dim. You can see the vice president in the middle, but can you tell who's uh, with him there? I'm sure it's uh, some of the space officials, but I, I can't make them out. Now the lighting is down. Oh, there, that helps. Well, there's George Lowe in front of the uh, vice president, our uh, acting administrator. He's taking Tom Payne's part, uh, place. Oh, there's Juan Carlos. Now it's brighter. Oh, yes, Juan Carlos, uh, the uh, uh, the designate uh, ruler of Spain. Prince Juan Carlos and his uh, Princess Sophia, they're right in the lower left-hand corner of your picture, and uh, Vice President Agnew in the center of the picture. Now we got a little better view of the prince and the princess. And there's uh, Kurt Debus, the director of this Kennedy Space Center, there just behind uh, Agnew. There's Walter Capri to the right. Capri and right in front of him with that big decision to make to launch. <laughs> oh, with the headset on his... Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, I suppose it, it is almost a routine performance for me to be here to congratulate the men and women of NASA on an incredibly successful launch and insertion into orbit. I must say that I never fail to be tremendously impressed and moved by this occurrence. Today is especially pleasurable because I had the opportunity to be with the Royal Highnesses of Prince Juan Carlos, Princess Sophia of Spain, and I can tell you this much, if I've ever seen two fans and converts to the American space undertaking, we have them right here and these wonderful foreign dignitaries with me today. I think that this flight as an especially meaningful and critical uh, mission in the American space program. I don't have to enlarge upon that to the men and women here. Our dedication to our space program remains undiminished. I think that we're going to continue to press forward for what needs to be done in this respect. And I want to congratulate the people of NASA who throughout all of the pullings and tuggings, the fears, and the exhilarations that undertake a high-risk venture such as the American Space Program have been so consistent, so constant, and certainly uh, so restrained in uh, their reaction to what may have been considered to be in some areas some very discouraging occurrences. Those days are past us, and we're going forward together, not just to the moon, but I'm certain that the American program will continue uh, to press forward into the reaches of interplanetary space.